welcome to Speakeasy Spirits. Today, I don't have any ingredients pulled out, because I don't know what we're making. We're going to let the computer decide and randomly pick a cocktail for us. And while we're at it, we're going to take a look at one essential tool that every bar needs to have. Let's figure out what I'm making. I'm using differentsguide.com. This is a really great cocktail website. You can enter all the ingredients you have and it'll tell you what recipes you can make with those ingredients. It also has a random cocktail button. So we're going to hit that and see what we get. All right, and our cocktail today is called Whip Me and Beat Me. And I am not looking forward to this. It's a shot made with absinthe, Malibu rum, and cream. It does not sound good. Give me a second to gather up the ingredients and we'll see how it turns out. I've gone to gather the ingredients and here is what this unholy abomination of a drink is made out of. Half an ounce of absinthe. Half an ounce of Malibu. Half an ounce of cream. And half an ounce of milk. I'm not going to enjoy this. Let's start with our absinthe. This is an herbal spirit. Uh, mostly what you're going to get is the taste of black licorice. Half an ounce of Malibu. Half an ounce of cream. You could use heavy cream or half and half here. And half an ounce of milk. Now we're going to shake that over ice. And we'll strain that into our shot glass. But in order to put off drinking this a little longer, let's talk about strainers. There are three kinds of strainers you're going to use in a bar. The most common and most useful is going to be the Hawthorne strainer. This one has a coiled spring running around it. Now this not only makes it fit tight on the top of your tin or glass, it's also very good at straining. You can tell a good one by how tightly the spring is coiled. On a cheaper one like this, you can see how widely the spring is spaced. That's not going to give you a whole lot of straining. It's also very thin and flexible. It's very lightweight. Where this one's got some heft to it, it's nice and sturdy, and the spring is going to give you a good strain. With a Hawthorne strainer, you're able to push it forward on that spring and close down how much you're going to pour out of it. So you can get a nice slow pour that's more filtered or let off, open up that top and let more through. So here we go. There you have a whip me and beat me. The absinthe and the cream do not play well together. The combination of the very sweet coconutty Malibu with the licorice flavors of the absinthe do not work. This is bad, but I'll drink it for science. So let's hit the random button on the phone again until we get a stirred cocktail so I can show you another kind of strainer. So the random button gave us another cocktail called the Tennessee Lip Lock. This is another one I've never tried before, but it doesn't sound nearly as bad as that first one. So we're going to start with two strawberries. Put those directly into a mixing glass. And crush them with your muddler. We're not looking to completely pulverize them, just to squeeze out some of the juices. That should be good. Next we need half an ounce of lemon juice. And add that to your mixing glass. Now this sounds like it's going to be overly sweet, but it calls for half an ounce of maple syrup. And then two ounces of Tennessee whiskey. 
To me, Tennessee whiskey says Jack Daniels, but you could easily sub in the whiskey of your choice. I'm sure it'd be good with a Pennsylvania rye, call it a Pennsylvania lip lock. Use a scotch and call it a Highlands lip lock. Let's add some ice to our mixing glass. And give it a stir. Now the key to stirring is you want to keep the back edge of the spoon against the glass as you go around. It takes a little practice, but it's not too hard to get it. You stir that until the glass starts to feel cold in your hand. Now this is actually the perfect cocktail to show you the next two strainers you might want to use. So this one is a julep strainer. It's less common than the Hawthorne strainer. I don't use it very often. I find it hard to work with. There's really nothing this one can do that the Hawthorne strainer doesn't already do, but much easier. This one you'll typically see used with a mixing glass. I like to put it in upside down because you can keep a finger on it and lock it in. If you put it in the other way, it tends to fall into the drink and it's difficult to hold in place. So we'll spin that upside down, lock it in with our finger. And the third strainer you'll want to use is a fine mesh strainer. Now a lot of times this is used to pick out any ice chips from a shaken drink. Or when you muddle something, if you want to get the fruit out of it, because we don't want all that strawberry pulp making it into our glass. And there you have a Tennessee Lip Lock. It is on the sweet side. If you're a fan of something like an Old Fashioned or a Manhattan, this is probably going to be too sweet for you. The maple syrup and the strawberries give it a really interesting sweet profile. I don't normally picture strawberries and maple together, but this really works. Lemon is usually a pretty classic combination with maple syrup. There are some whiskey sours that use it. So really this isn't too far off of a strawberry whiskey sour. Now if that is too sweet for you, we can optionally top it with some club soda. Or, in this case, I'm going to use some Topo Chico mineral water. And we'll just top that off to give it a little bit of fizz. And let's add a lemon slice. With the Topo Chico, it really brings down that sweetness level. It's a much more refreshing cocktail now. It's still not very spirit forward, but it's a good, easy sipper. I like using the Topo Chico because it has a little bit of salinity to it, which helps bring out some of the other flavors there in there. So if it had been me, I probably wouldn't have picked this recipe out, but I'm glad it gave it to me. This may be one I go back to in the future. And then we have two cocktails, one abomination, and three strainers. I got all three of these strainers on Amazon for about $18. I'll leave a link in the description below. They're really high quality. If you need a strainer, I really recommend picking up this set. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, be sure to like and subscribe. We'll see you next time.